This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hello, everyone. Today, inshallah, uh, we'll start. This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, today, inshallah, uh, we'll start our uh, MRCG Barton course with the first session of the anatomy, which is about the anterior uh, abdominal wall and pelvis. As you know, uh, the anatomy is very important modules in MRCG Barton exam because it represents about 22 to 23% of paper one question. So this is about fig figures is 22 to 23% of the question from paper one. It is uh, mainly from uh, anatomy. So it is very important to know well the anatomy of the pelvis, anterior abdominal wall, cranium, and female genital tract. Actually, we will focus in on applied anatomy, which is related to the clinical application and surgical importance. So we'll discuss the anatomy and the clinical importance, which is very important in MRCG Barton exam. So first, we'll start with uh, anterior abdominal wall. The anterior abdominal wall. The anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall is very important. In this presentation, we'll discuss the anatomy of the anterior abdominal wall because it is very important and have related to the gynecological and obstetrical surgery. So we'll focus on about the clinical important and surgical appointment in anterior abdominal wall. First, start to the anterior abdominal wall borders. It is either cranially or caudally, and the cranially is the, the border of the anterior wall of the anterior abdominal wall is defined as superior by the 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 phenoid, the phoid process of the sternum and subcostal margin of the rib. So the border of the anterior abdominal wall is defined superiorly by the devoid process of the sternum and the sphenoid aspect of the lower rim that make up the costal margin. And casually is the border is defined by the anterior and the upper edge of the pubic surface, inguinal ligament, and the iliac crest. So casually is the border is Divine by the upper edge of the pubic surface and the inguinal ligament and the iliac crest. So this is about the uh, anterior abdominal wall borders. So what what is that about the service marking of the anterior abdominal wall? This important service marking in the anterior abdominal wall, like plecus and lena alba and lena seminaris and anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic surface and subcostal margin. So this is the important landmark of the anterior abdominal wall uh, is umbilicus. This is the umbilicus and this is uh, lena alba and this is rectus abdominis muscles. So if you remember the, the a surgical region of the anterior abdominal wall, like right here is the right hypochondric, and this is represented about the liver, gallbladder, and the right kidney. And this region of the epigastric regions, which can deflect the uh, anatomy of the stomach and liver and the duodenum. And in the left hypogastric hypochondrium, uh, this is spleen and color and in the center here is the umbilical region which can flex the disease of a small testine and duodenum and in the right here is the right lumbar and this is the left lumbar and here the right iliac 
fossa, which uh, may reflect the disease of the appendix, and hypogastric regions. This is uh, the urinary bladder, sigmoid colon, and left iliac is present about the sigmoid colon. This is uh, roughly about the abdominal region. So, what about the structure of the anterior abdominal wall? So, the structure of the anterior abdominal wall from outside to the inside first start with the skin and subcutaneous tissues, fascia, as compress fascia, fatty superficial layers, and scarf fascia, deep fibrous layers, superficial abdominal fascia. So fascia either superficial as the compress fascia or deep layers as the scarves fascia. And these muscles, about three important muscles, which form the rectal seat, external oblique abdominal muscles, internal oblique abdominal muscle and rectus muscle. So transversalis fascia, vestibulotoneal fascia, and parietal peritoneum. This is about the structure of the anterior abdominal wall from outside to inside. So we'll this picture show the abdominal wall from the outside to inside. Very <laughs> <laughs> superficial fascia fatty layers and there is superficial fascia membranous layers that covers uh, fascia and then the about <laughs> external oblique muscles and internal oblique muscles transversus abdominal abdominus muscle and transversalis fascia this is about the layer of the anterior abdominal wall so also picture show the layer of the anterior abdominal wall start from the skin subcutaneous layers by abdominus muscle and rectus muscle This is also about the uh, muscle of the anterior abdominal wall. What about the skin and subcutaneous tissues? The skin is the largest organ of the human body. It has numerous functions, including protection against mechanical injury, prevention of bacterial invasion, and protection from the effect of ultraviolet light and the skin is loosely attached to the underlying structure of the abdomen with the exception of the umbilicus where the skin is distributed firmly to underlying tissues and the subcutaneous tissue is comprised of deep and superficial adipose tissues layers separated by weak poorly defined fibrous tissues matrices cumbrous uh, fascia is superficial and Cumbrous fascia is deep. And cumbrous fascia is superficial fatty layers that is continuous with superficial adipose and may vary in thickness depending on the patient body habit. This is generally about the <laughs> fascia and skin. So, what about the muscle of the anterior abdominal wall? So the musculature of the ab abdominal wall is composed of two muscle groups, okay? One group promises the flat muscles, consists of three muscles, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and transversus abdominus. This is about the important muscle which form the rectal shape. And the second group is composed of two muscles that run vertically and twist the muscles, rectus abdominis, 
and pyramidalis. This is about the other two muscles, rectus abdominis and pyramidalis. So we show the uh, picture to be clear for all. This is about this uh, chart is about the anterior abdominal wall muscle. So here important to know about the origin and the insertion and about what is the function of each muscles. The external oblique muscles, it is origin from muscular slip from the outer surface of the lower eight ribs. So ribs five to 12. And lateral lip of the, the insertion in the lateral lip of the iliac crest, this ended in midline nerve, lena alba. So in the iliac crest and the lena alba, and the inversion is anterior lamai of the lower six thoracic spinal nerves. What about the function of the of the external oblique muscles? It is press abdominal content. Both muscles collect trunk. Each muscle pin trunk so to same sides and anterior part of the abdomen to the opposite side. This is the function of the external oblique. What about the internal oblique? Also internal oblique is origin from the thoracic lumbar fascia and also the crest between, between origin of the external and transfer this lateral two thirds of the inguinal ligament. So this is the origin of the internal oblique. So what, are, what about the insertion? And the insertion in the inferior border of the lower three or four ribs. Abrosis ending in the lena alba, pubic crest, and pectinal line. This is about the insertion of the internal object. So, what about the inversion? Innervation. Innervation by the anterior rami of the lower six thoracic spinal nerve. So, T7 and T. 12 and L1. So this is very important because sometimes we ask about the innervation of the anterior abdominal wall. So you should know it. Yeah. And the function of the internal oblique is compressed abdominal content, also like uh, external oblique. Both muscle flex trunk, each muscle pen trunk and turn anterior part of the abdomen to the same side. And the third one is the transversus abdominis. It is transversus abdominis. It is origin from the same terminal oblique, thoracic lumbar fascia, medial lip of the iliac crest, lateral one third of the inguinal ligament, costal cartilage, lower six ribs. Sorry, from the seven to the twelve. Abrosis in ending in the lena alba. So you. If you look here for the insertion, all the three muscles and roses end in the lena alba to form the rectus sheet. So this rectus sheet is uh, formed by the abluroses of the three, these three muscles. The innervation by anterior rami of the lower six thoracic spinal nerve, the same as external oblique and internal oblique and transversus abdominis. So this is the same. Except here, here only the L1 and L1 for internal oblique and transversus muscle, and the only uh, T7 to T12 for the external oblique. Also, the same function is compressed abdominal content. For this is about the three important uh, muscles. What about the other two? Rectus abdominis. So it is the origin from the pubic crest and the pubic tracheal and pubic symphysis. And the insertion is the costal cartilage of the rib five to the seventh, the foid process. And the innervation is the same as the external oblique. And, the, and this muscle also compares abdominal content and flex vertebral column tends the abdominal wall. So what about the last muscles? This is, this is muscle is found only in 20% of the humans. So pyramidalis is 
origin from of the pubis and pubic symphysis and insertion in the lena alba here the innervation by the anterior ramus of the t12 and function is tenses the lena alba so this is the about the most important abdominal wall the most important three is this external oblique and internal oblique and versus abdominal so we'll discuss it separately with rectus shield is it clear yes yes doctor okay yes Okay, this is a picture show the, the abdominal wall. This is the, about the rectus abdominis, and this is the external oblique muscles, and below it is the internal oblique, and this is about transversus abdominis, and this is the internal oblique, and this is the external oblique muscle. So, first, this is the external oblique. And this is the internal oblique, and this is the transversus abdominis. So this is this transverse section shows the layers of the abdominal wall. Here also the skin. Under that this superficial fascia, compressed fascia, and deep is carbus fascia and this neurosis of the three muscles this are external oblique and under the external oblique the internal oblique and below the internal oblique this transverse abdominal muscle so this is three neurosis muscle come form the rectus sheet so what about the rectus sheet which is very important to know about the rectus sheet in the anterior abdominal because there is many questions about the rectus sheet. So you should know the formation of the rectus sheet. The formation of the rectus sheet, it is by abnerosis of the three muscles, the external oblique muscle and the internal oblique muscle and transversus abdominis muscle so this is important muscle to formation of the of the uh, rectus sheet and the anterior and posterior leg close recti muscle on both sides of the middle line and different configuration above and below the arcuate line so we'll see the picture to know what about the rectus sheet So here, this is about transfer section, the A and B. A is about transfer section through the upper three quarter of the rectus sheet. Here is the same, lean alba, and this is the rectus abdominis, and this is the uh, external oblique muscle, and anterior oblique muscle, and this is transfer, transversus abdominis, and this is abdominis, and finally, the rectus abdominis. <laughs> And this is the transfer to the lower one quarter of the rectus. So, when, if you want to discuss the rectus sheet, we'll talk about the above the arcuate square line and the blue arcuate line. So, first we'll discuss about the above the arcuate line. Yeah, this is about the arcuate line, the anterior wall, and the posterior wall. Here, the abnerosis of the anterior oblique join the external oblique abnerosis. So, the superior two-thirds of the internal oblique yeah, is split in two layers. The, the is, superior two cells of the uh, nuisance uh, from that yes. 
Beleza? Ok. If I want to talk about the above the arcuate line, here the superior, the superior two thirds of the internal oblique abnorosis is split in two layers as the lateral border of the rectus abdominis. So, at the, as the lateral border of the rectus abdominis and which of the one lamina passing the anterior to the muscle and to the other posterior to it. So, split it to two layers and with one lamina passing interior and to the muscle and one of the posterior to it. So, the anterior lamina join the abnormalities of the external oblique muscle. So, here, join the abnormalities of the external oblique muscle to form the anterior layer of the rectus sheet. To form the anterior layer of the rectus sheet and the posterior of the anterior oblique join the abnormalities of the rectus abdominis, transfers the abdominis uh, to form the posterior of the rectus sheet. So, so that is why the uh, rectus sheet formed by the abnormalities of the three. So the most important muscle here is the uh, internal oblique. So it's split in two layers and one uh, layers is joined with the external oblique to, to form the anterior layer of the rectus sheet. And the posterior layers join with the abnormalities of the transversus abdominis to form the posterior layers of the rectus sheet. So this is how to formation of the rectus sheet above the arcuate line. So what about the blue? The arcuate line here. There is midway between the umbilicus and the pubic crest. All three abnormalities form the anterior layer, so the seat is deficient posterior. So in the below the arcuate line, only the, the three muscles form the, just one layer, so the anterior layer. So the posterior is deficient. Okay. And the posterior is formed only by the transversalis fascia. Look here, look here. The three, sorry. If you look here, for here, look for the posterior below the arcuate line. Here, the three abnormalities of the muscles form to, to, to form the anterior layers of the rectus sheet. So the posterior here is deficient and uh, mainly by the transversalis fascia. This is the recall question. Okay. So what about the blood supply of the anterior abdominal wall? So the blood supply of the anterior abdominal wall Compromise of the superior, superficial and deep vascular supply. So the primary blood supply of the anterior abdominal wall is formed by superficial and deep blood vessels. The main blood vessels supplying the anterior lateral abdominal wall as the follow. Okay. Superior epigastric vessels and the branches of the muscular phrenic artery and the inferior epigastric and deep circumflex iliac artery and superficial circumflex iliac and superficial epigastric arteries posterior intercostal visits on the 11th intercostal space and the anterior flange so this is about the main blood vessels to supply anterior lateral abdominal wall so this is important surgical because this the surgical importance will discuss the mainly about the inferior epigastric artery because uh, this is the main business injuries in, in laparoscopic surgery so you should know about the inferior epigastric artery it is which arise from the cristianian iliac arteries so this is the most important here because of a lot of uh, problem is the 
laparoscopic surgery. And the deep vessels originate from the external iliac and the internal thoracic artery. So this is about internal costal arteries, musculophrenic arteries, superficial circumflex iliac artery, and this is the inferior epigastric artery, and superior epigastric artery and internal thoracic artery. This is about the blood supply and we'll discuss about superior epigastric vessels. So superior epigastric vessel is the direct continuation of the internal thoracic artery. It is interdirector sheet super, superior through the through it is posterior layer and supplies the superior part of the rectus, abdominus and stomosis with the inferior epigastric artery in the umbilical region. So this is the course of the superior epigastric vessels and the inferior epigastric vessels arises from the external iliac artery and superior epigastric artery from the internal and inferior epigastric vessels or inferior epigastric artery from the external iliac artery just superior to inguinal ligament it is run superior to the transversalis fascia to enter the rectus sheet below the equate line. It is enter the lower part of the rectus abdominis and ostomosis which with the superior epigastric artery. So this is the important arteries and the most important also is superficial circumflex iliac artery which run in the subcutaneous tissues toward the umbilicus and it supplies the superficial abdominal wall of the inguinal region and at the same anterior side region. This is about arteries here. And there is also superficial epigastric artery. Superficial epigastric artery begins as a single artery that branches sensibly and run in the subcutaneous tissues towards the umbilicus. It supplies the superficial abdominal wall of the pubic and inferior umbilical region. Musculophrenic artery is originated from the internal thoracic vessels and descending along the costal margin, it supplies the superficial and deep abdominal wall of the epigastric and the upper umbilical region. So this is the about uh, blood supply here. We'll discuss uh, the importance of the blood vessel because it will be related to the surgery. So this is the Visits at the risk of the injury. Injury is especially likely during the placement of the laparoscopic lateral portal, especially the inferior epigastric artery, and transversus subrobic or parabedian injuries could also injure these visits to open at open surgery. So also in the laparotomy may lead to injury of this visit. So you should know about the anatomy uh, related to the surgery, or who is the risk uh, of the blood injuries. What about the lymphatic drainage of the upper abdominal wall? So the lymphatic in the region above the umbilicus drain into axillary lymph nodes. So if the lymphatic above the umbilicus, so drain in the axillary lymph node. And lymphatic in the region below the umbilicus drain into superficial inguinal nodes. This is very important. So it is the landmark here is the umbilicus is the above umbilicus is drained into axillary lymph nodes and below the umbilicus is drained into superficial inguinal nodes. So superficial inguinal lymph nodes also receive lymph drainage from the lower abdomen wall and buttocks and scrotum, penis, labia, major. And the lower part of the vagina and the anal canal 
and ever lymphatic visits from the superficial inguinal group of lymph nodes, primary drain into cisternal iliac nodes. So on the other hand, the deep inguinal lymph node receive most of the drainage of the, from the lower limbs. So here's the important above the umbilicus is the axillary lymph node and below the umbilicus is the superficial inguinal nodes. What about the innervation of the anterior abdominal wall or the nerve supply of the anterior abdominal wall? The major nerve supplying the anterior abdominal wall includes sorasu abdominal nervous, subcostal nerve, and ilioinguinal nerve, and iliohypogastric nerve, and the lateral cutaneous branch of the thoracic spinal nerve. So this is the nerve supply. We'll discuss it separately. What about the sorasu abdominal nerve? because this may be nerve injury or nerve trap during surgery, so you should know about the nerve supply. This is are the distal abdominal part of the anterior rami of the inferior five thoracic spinal nerve, 7 to 311. And this nerve innervates the flat muscle of the abdominal wall and the rectus muscle. So the abdominal nerve, it supplies the abdominal wall and the rectus muscle. What about the iliohypogastric and ilionguinal nerve. Both of these nerves are terminal branches of the anterior ramus of the spinal nerve, L1, with, with the iliohypogastric nerve being the superior terminal branch and the inguinal nerve being the inferior one. So both originate from the L1 and iliohypogastric, it is being the superior terminal branch and the inguinal is the inferior well, so this is about nerve supply. The superficial nerve and this deep nerve. Iliohypogastric nerve supplies the skin overlies the iliac crest and upper inguinal and hypogastric region, internal oblique, and transversus abdominus muscle, ilioinguinal nerve on the other hand, supplies the skin of the lower inguinal region. Mons pubis, anterior scrotum, or labia majora, and the adjacent medical side as well as inferior most region of the internal oblique and transversus abdominus. So, if there is damage to this nerve, may result in sensory change in the mons pubis and labia major. So this is the important to know the, the uh, nerve supply because any damage to this nerve during surgery may lead to uh, sensory change. So you should know about if there is any sensory change in the mons pubis and labia major should uh, look for these two nerves, iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve. What about the lateral cutaneous branches? This is branches emerge from the musculature of the anterior lateral abdominal wall and originate from the anterior rami of the spinal nerve, seven to nine. It is then enters the subcutaneous tissues along the anterior, anterior axillary line in form of anterior and posterior deficiency. So what about the subcostal nerve? It is originated from the anterior ramus of the spinal nerve, T12, and the anterior abdominal wall, continuous branches. This is about subcostal. And the thoracic abdominal nerve, the skin superior to the umbilicus supplies by, this is a very important because this is a quick question about skin superior to umbilicus is supplied by T7 to T9. And the skin around the umbilicus supplies by T10. This is the question, the cold question. And the skin below the umbilicus supplied by T to L1 and the continuous branches of the subcostal, iliohypogastric, and the ilioinguinal nerve. So this is very important to know about the thoracic abdominal nerve. And the skin above the umbilicus is T7 to 9, below around the umbilicus 10, and below the umbilicus is. L1. 
to L1. So this picture shows a nerve, dermatose a nerve supply of the anterior abdominal wall. So this around the umbilicus is T10 and above umbilical and the blue, the umbilicus. So we said the skin around the umbilicus about T10 and above the T7 and to T9. Yeah, this is above the umbilicus and around the umbilicus T10 and below it T11 to, to L1. This is about thoraco abdominal nerve. Here is clear also the dermatosis of the anterior abdominal wall. Here yeah, around 10 around the umbilicus and T7 to 9 above the umbilicus and flow umbilicus is T11 to L1. So this is about the nerve injury. So this important thing in the anterior abdominal related to the surgery about the abdominal incision. We have uh, many abdominal incision here. So this is about the abdominal incision. The first is the, the midline incision. Yeah, this is for uh, labrotomy. It is midline incision through the lena alba. And this is important in surgery. And there is also suprapubic transfers. This is the mestinal incision. And this is the palmar point. This is about labrotomy. So we'll, we'll discuss about the midline incision. The midline incision is through lean alba. Above the umbilicus is wide, but through the level it becomes narrow. And the surgeon may experience some difficulty in finding the third line of cleavage between the two recti. So this is the, about the midline. The steel incision, which is in the transfer section, in the cesarean section, and trans also this transfers scission to cohen scission. This is about sorry. This is about labros labrotomy and labroscopy. Here labro labroscopy this palmar point and in labrotomy. This is about midline incision. This is the importance of the anterior abdominal wall in related to the abdominal incision. So this is about abdominal wall. Okay, uh, the second topic, uh, inshallah, we'll discuss the female pelvis. So this is very important in anatomy because a lot of questions came in exam asking about the pelvis spawn and about the muscle, about the foramen and the other structure in the female cell. So what about the pony pelvis of the, about the bone of the pelvis? So the pony pelvis main function is to transmit the weight of the body from the vertebral column to the for uh, the female, okay? So this is the about pawn which forms the pawn pelvis of the pelvis. So this is the about anterior abdominal part of the pelvis and this is the pelvic part of the pelvis. So also here about the pelvic bone. So the pony pelvis form strong passing shaped structure that contain and protect the lower part of the spinal and the urinary tract and the internal organ and of abduction. The pelvis is divided in two parts by pelvic plane. So 
pelvic brim can divide the pelvis in two parts, the true pelvis and the false pelvis. So the above the brim is the false pelvis, which forms a part of the abdominal part, cavity, and below the brim is the true pelvis. So here, this is component of the pelvic pole, the medial cervix and the cervix. Okay, we'll start with the posterior pelvic wall. The posterior pelvic wall is extensive and is formed by the sacrum and coccyx and by the piriformis muscle and their covering of the parietal pelvic fascia. What about the sacrum? The sacrum consists of five rudimentary vertebrae fused together to form single wedge shaved bone with a forward concavity. And the upper border of the or base of the the bone articulate with the fifth lumbar vertebra and the narrow inferior border articulate with the coccyx. Later is the sacrum articulate with the two iliac bone to form the sacroiliac joint. And the anterior and um, upper margin of the first sacral vertebrae bulk for, forward as the posterior margin of the pelvic inlet. The sacral perimentary, which is important of a citric mark, used when measuring the side of the pelvis. What about the sacral canals? This contain the anterior and posterior root of the lumbars sacral and coccygeal spinal nerve, filium terminal, and fibro fatty material. So this is uh, the sacrum, the anterior view of the sacrums and the posterior view of the sacrum. Look here for sacral perimentary and this superior articular, articular uh, process and the anterior sacral foramina. And this is about transfers process of scostus. What about the coscus? The coscus consists of four vertebrae fused together to form a small triangular point, which articulate it and it is paced with the lower end of the sacrum. So this is the about the posterior row of the pelvis. So what about the lateral pelvic wall? This is very important, the pelvic bone, where there is hip bone, okay? What about the hip bone? Hip bone children, each bone, hip bone consists of the ilium, which lies superiorly, and the ischium, which lies posteriorly and inferiorly, and the pubis, which lies anterior and inferiorly. So the hip bone composed of the three bones is the ilium, and the ischium and the uh, pubis. The three separate bone are joined by cartilage as the stabulum. So the, the three bone fuse in the area called the stabulum. At property, these three bone fuse together to form one large irregular bone, the hip bone. The hip bone articulate with the sacrum as the sacroiliac joint and form the anterior lateral wall of the pelvis. They also articulate with one another anterior as the surface pubis. So the hip bone articulate the posterior with sacroiliac joint and this anterior is the surface pubis. This is about the lateral wall of the pelvis. What about the ilium, which is the upper flattened part of the hip bone, uh, possesses the iliac crest? What about the iliac crest? So in the iliac crest, it is thus about the superior margin of the ilium, and which is the very important site for the muscle attachment of the muscle of the fascia, uh, on fascia of the abdomen and the pad. 
So it is very important the electric crest here. Run between the anterior and the posterior superior electric spine. And below this spine are the corresponding anterior and posterior inferior electric spine. The ischium is the inferior and posterior part of the hip bone and both is the scale spine and the scale tuberosity. And the ubis is the anterior part of the hip bone and has a body and superior and inferior pubic ramite. This is about three important bones to form the hip bone. So what about the joint? Joint of the pelvis, lumbosacral joint. And the sacrum, the sacrum articulate superiorly with the lumbar part of the vertebral column. And the lumbosacral joint are formed between the vertebra and the sacrum consists of the two, of the two zygophysical joint, which occur between adjacent inferior and superior articular process and inter, intervertebral disc that joins the bodies of the vertebral LV and S1. These three joins are similar to those between other vertebrae. This is about the lumbo sacral joint. The lumbo sacral joint are reinforced by strong iliolumbar and lumbosacral ligament that extend from the expanded transversus process of vertebrae LV to the ilium and sacrum respectively. So here is about the lumbosacral joint and associated ligament. This is A is the lateral view. Here, the physical joint here, look for this. And this is the fermentary and intervertebral disc. And this is the anterior longitudinal ligament. And the anterior view, B, here, look for the lumbosacral ligament and the anterior sacral ligament. And this is the iliolumbar ligament. This is the ilium, and this is the pubis, and this is the ischium. What about the sacroiliac joint? The sacroiliac joint transmits the force from the lower limb to the vertebral column. So this transmit of the force from the lower limb to the vertebral column. They are so synovial joint. Maybe ask about the type of joint. So you should know about the sacroiliac joint. It is the synovial joint. This is about sacroiliac joint and associated ligament. This is the lateral view, and this is the anterior view, and this is the posterior view. This is the pubic, surface pubic. This is the also synovial. This is the joint, and this is the anterior sacroiliac ligament. A pubic surface, surface joint. The pubic surface, surface is like anterior between the adjacent surface of the pubic bone. So the fusion of the two pubic bone, each of the joint surface is covered by hyaline cartilage and is linked across the midline to adjacent surface by fibro cartilage. This joint is surrounded by the interwoven layers of the collagen fibers and the two major ligaments associated with it are the superior pubic ligament and the inferior pubic ligament. This is the surface pubis. Yeah, this is about two pubic pond. What about the uh, important of clinical of the sacroiliac joint or the common problem with the sacroiliac joint? The sacroiliac joint has both fibrous and synovial components, and as with many weight bearing joints, degenerative change, more care, and cause pain, and discomfort in the sacroiliac region. 
So this is the importance of the bond. Uh, we'll discuss now about the ligament. What the important two ligament is the sacrotuberous ligament and sacrospinous ligament. What is the importance of these two? Because this is the lead to formation of the uh, crater sciatic and the laser. Okay. And the sacrospinous ligament is strong and extends from the lateral part of the sacrum and the coccyx and the posterior inferior iliac spine to the scale towards it. And the sacrospinous ligament also the strong and triangular shape it attached by its space to the lateral part of the sacrum and coccyx and it is a big uh, to the spine of the scale so we look for the this picture here this is uh, the sacrospinous ligament and this is the sacrotuberous ligaments so what about the importance of this ligament because this um, this ligament it is very important because it separate it is the great sciatic foramen and the laser sciatic foramen because uh, the sacrospinous ligament divides this foramen to the great sciatic foramen and the laser sciatic foramen so we'll, here also the great sciatic foramen and this is the laser, laser sciatic foramen. So it's separated by sacrospinous ligament. So what about the crater sciatic foramen? And what is the content of the crater sciatic foramen? Maybe ask about the greater sciatic foramen. So what is the content? The content of the crater sciatic foramen it is transmit the following structure. So maybe the question is exam asking about the what is the uh, structure of pass through the greater sciatic or the laser sciatic. Oh, so, so the great sciatic foramen transmits the following structure: the piriformis muscles, piriformis muscle, and the superior gluteal nerve and the vessels, and the inferior gluteal nerve and vessels. And the sciatic nerve along with the nerve of the quad femoris, and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the side, and the nerve of the trator internus, and the internal pudendal nerve and vessel. So this is the, about the structure passed through the great sciatic foramen. And laser sciatic foramen transmits the tendon of, of the trator internus the insertion of the greater locanteric of the femur and the nerve of the trator ternus and the budendal vessel and nerve return or to the vessel through it so this is the important structure passes through the greater sciatic foramen and laser sciatic foramen so we said uh, the pelvic brim divides the pelvic in two poles and about the true pelvis. So this is picture show uh, was the true pelvis and false false pelvis, and this is the true pelvis. And the true pelvis composed of the inlet pelvic inlet, pelvic cavity, and the outlet. Yeah, this is about the pelvic inlet. Okay, this is the sacral promontory. And this is the pubic surfaces anteriorly. And this is the pubic tubercle. And this is about the sacral iliac joint. So this is the line of the pelvic inlet, which separates the false pelvis and the true pelvis. This is about pelvic outlet. This is the border. This is the pubic symphysis. 
and the coccyx. This is about the border of the pelvic outlet. So here, the pelvic diameter here is very important. This is related to the uh, labor, and this is the mechanical of the labor or the passage of the fetus through the pelvic pers or the pers canal. So first with the start with the pelvic inlet and pelvic cavity and pelvic outlet. So we have the three main diameters. So the anterior posterior, the oblique, and the transversus. So here the transversus is about 13, which is the most Longest one because the, the fetus or the presenting part enters the pelvis through the transverse position. And in the pelvic cavity, all the three is the same anterior posterior, the oblique, and transversus. And the pelvic outlet here, the 13 is the anterior posterior, is the biggest one more than transverse because the baby is delivered or expelled through the anterior posterior position. So this is about the difference between the inlet and the pelvic cavity and outlet is the anterior posterior and transverse diameter. So the oblique is the same in the three. So we said this is a baby intertransference in the pelvic inlet and this is the pelvic cavity and the, uh, pass through the pelvis through the pelvic outlets by subito anterior. This is about the anterior view of the pelvis. This is the male pelvis and this is the female pelvis. This is the difference between male pelvis and female pelvis. This chart shows the, the difference between the female pelvis and the male pelvis because maybe a question came ask about the difference between the female pelvis and male pelvis. So generally, the structure the female pelvis is larger and border because this is the female pelvis and male is taller and narrower and more compact. This is the difference between here is the large and here is taller. Pelvic canals short and almost cylindrical. And the pelvic side wall are wider. Shape of the pelvic inlet is large and oval. And the pelvic outlet is large. Suprapubic arch is wider in female. And the scale spine and diversity less permanent. And the sacrum is shorter, wide, and flatter. And the articular surface of the sacrum articulate laterally with two sacral bodies and obturator forming is triangular. So here is the difference between the female pelvis and the male pelvis. Here have the four major pelvic types, gynecoid, gynecoid, gynecoid. Here, what is the characteristic of the gynecoid pelvis? This oval and cavity is shallow, side wall is straight, scale spine is plant, sacrum broad and well curved, and subrepubic arch wide is between 90 to 100 degrees. So, this is the ideal female pelvis is the gynecoid, and the, the other one is also broad pelvis. It is the heart shaped with narrow and true posterior diameters. And cavity is funnel, shabby, and deep, and side wall is convergent, and scale spine projecting, sacrum is slightly curved, and subrepubic arch narrow and less than 90 degrees. Uh, we'll discuss about the fetal skull. So, fetal skull is very important. Maybe many questions can ask it about the fetal skulls because it's related to the, the pairs and others. So, here, the fetal skulls, both of the suture and bones. Okay, here there is parietal bone, there is two parietal bone, there is two parietal bone, 
and frontal to frontal bone and occipital bone. So what about the suture? Suture it is lie between two bones. You have frontal or this is the first one is the frontal or meto metopic suture which lie between the two frontal bone. So the suture it is frontal or meto metotopics is lie between the, the two frontal bone. And the others is the coronal suture. Coronal suture lie between the frontal and parietal bone. So it is lie between the frontal and the parietal bone. And the sagittal suture lies between the two parietal bone. And what about the lamboided sutures? It lies between the one occipital and parietal bone. So it is between the parietal bone and one uh, occipital bone. So this is very important to know about the suture. So what is the importance of the suture? What is the importance of the suture? Anybody knows? What is the importance of the suture? Mm -hmm. For modeling. Yes. At delivery. Do you movement of the fetus during delivery? So it is permit gliding movement of one bone over the others during modeling of the head in the vertical presentation. So this is the important of thank you so much. This is the important of the clinical important of the suture. So it is permit gliding movement of foam bone over the others during molding of the head in the vertex presentation. So what is the definition of molding? What is the definition of molding? So we'll discuss Overlap of uh, clinical problem. Of form during labor. Change in shape. What about the molding? What is the definition of molding? Overlap of uh, of carbon during labor. Yes, excellent. It is the change is the shape of the head in the vertical presentation during labor while passing through the birth canal. So this is about mold. So this important definition here regarding the 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 labor and the, about the presenting part, about the lie, about the presentation about the position and the engagement. You should know about this. What about the definition of lie of the fetus? Relation of axis of fetus uh, in, in opposite to mom, presentation of mother. Yes, the, the long longitudinal axis of the fetus related to the longitudinal axis of the uterus. So this is the definition of lie, lie of the fetus. What about the presentation? What is the definition of presentation? It's a presenting part. Any presentation there is, other than vertical? There is part. The first part. Here, uh, the part of the fetus. Yes, the part of the fetus nears to the pelvic brim. Out the pelvic inlet. So this is the part of the fetus nears to the pelvic inlet. This is the definition of presentation. What about the position? Position is the relationship of a fixed part of the fetus to the fixed part of the maternal spine. Yes, excellent. Because it's a relationship of the the unators to the pelvic maternal pelvis. So this is an important definition. And the station is the level of descent of the presenting part, which is represent to the maternal pelvis. Yes, right. So this is very important in uh, labor to know about. So what about the anterior ventinelle and the posterior ventinelle? So the anterior 
ventinels or pigma. This is the anterior ventinel. You know, this is the posterior ventinel. This is the anterior ventinel and called is pigma. What about the closure of the anterior ventinel? Anybody knows? At six months, close. Yeah, it is usually closed by the age of nine to nine, 18 months of the age. Mm -hmm. Nine to 18 months. If there's any question, right. ask you about the anterior ventral as the closure of the anterior ventral, you mm -hmm. should range between nine to 18 months. Mm -hmm. about that. What about the posterior ventral? Three, Three months. months. Yes. Most of the cases, it is after delivery, yeah? but maybe most of the cases, uh, closure with, with two months of the age, up to month, two months of the age. Some textbooks said between one to two months, and most of the said uh, up to two months of the age. Okay? This is the about posterior uh, ventinal. So, <laughs> this is about the anterior fontanel and the clinical importance. What was the clinical importance of the anterior fontanel? This the degree of flexion can be assessed from its position if no vaginal examination. It is felt easy, indicates the head is not well flexed. So in BB, it is very important to uh, examine for the anterior ventrals. It is helped in molding of the head, form it is position, internal rotation of the head can be assessed. So this is the important, clinical important of the anterior and the posterior ventral also is closed in by age one or two months of age. So this is about the some diameters. This is about the face presentation, prow presentation, and the vertex presentation. You should know about the this uh, should idea about this. Okay. So with with what about the sub occipital pragmatics? And the length is about 9.5 centimeters. And the presenting in flexed vertex. So this is the about sub occipital pragmatic. Here. This is the sub occipital pragmatics. Alihua sub occipital pragmatic. It is extend from the Nape of the neck here, then from epsilon to the center of the anterior ventral here, the center of the anterior ventral, and starting from the nape of the neck to the center of the anterior ventral. This is the suboccipital pragmatics diameter. So this is uh, this is the smallest diameter, only 9.5 centimeter. It is flexed vertex. Is it clear? From the nape of the neck to the center of the anterior ventral. This is the suboccipital pragmatics, and the length is about 9.5 centimeters, is the smallest diameters. The second one is the suboccipital frontals. Suboccipital frontal. Here, yeah. suboccipital frontal. This is the two, number two. It is 10.5 centimeters. In partial deflexed vertex. Presentation. You should know about the vertex presentation, about the power presentation. And, okay. And what about the suboccipital frontal? It extends from the nape of the neck to the root of the nose. Here. Yeah. In the nape of the neck, we have two lines. The emitter start from here. If it is in the anterior ventral, this is the suboccipital vertex. And if it is the root of the nerve, this is the about suboccipital frontal, is 10.5 centimeters. 
and this is about the tertiary ternus muscle, the pubic coccyus, and the iliac coccyus muscle, and this is the tendinous arch of the levator anal. What about the pelvic fascia? The pelvic fascia is formed of the connective tissues and it is continuous above with the fascia lining the abdominal wall. Below the fascia is continuous with the fascia of the perineum, and the pelvic fascia can be divided into parietal and visceral layers. Okay. What about the innervation of the pelvis, the sacral plexus? So the sacral plexus lies on the posterior pelvic wall in front of the reformed muscles. It is formed from the anterior rami of the fourth and fifth lumbar nerve, and in the anterior rami of the first, second, third, and fourth sacral nerve. This is the recall question. The fourth lumbar nerve joins the fifth lumbar nerve to form the lumbosacral trunk, and the lumbosacral trunk passes down into the pelvis and joins the sacral nerve as they merge from the anterior sacral prominence. So what is the relation? Anterior the anterior iliac vessels and the branches and the rectum, the rectum and posterior the performance muscle. So this is about flexus and number sacral trunk and this is trunk L5 is one. Two, three, four, and this is about innervation of the female reproductive organs. So this is the branches of the sacral plexus. So first we'll discuss the superior gluteal nerve, and what about the distribution of the branches? Lower distribute to the Glottis medius and the glottis minimus and tense facial muscles. And the inferior gluteal nerve is the gluteus maxima muscles and nerve to reformus, reformus muscles and nerve to obturator ternus. There is obturator internus and superior glomerulus muscles. And the nerve to quadrus femoris, quadrus femoris and inferior glomerulus muscles. Reforming Protein uh, cutaneous nerve, skin over medical aspect of buttocks, and posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Distribute to the skin over posterior surface of thigh and popliteal fossa, also over lower part of the buttocks, scrotum or labia major. What about the important trisciatic nerve and the common perineal? portion and the pudendal nerve. This is the important branches of the sacral plexus. Yeah, this is discussed about the branches. And the branches of the lumbar plexus is the lumbosacral trunk. The part of the anterior rami of the fourth lumbar nerve merges from the medial border of the psoas muscle and join the anterior rami of the fifth lumbar nerve to form the lumbosacral trunk. This trunk now enters the pelvis by passing down in front of sacroiliac joint and joins the sacral plexus. The obturator nerve is a branch of the lumbar plexus emerged from the medial border of the psoas muscle in the abdomen and accompanies the lumbosacral trunk down to the pelvis. Inferior hypogastric plexus. The inferior hypogastric plexus lie on each side of the rectum, the base of the bladder, and the vagina. Each plexus is confirmed from the hypogastric nerve and from the pelvic splenic nerve. It is contained both ganglionic sympathetic fibers, pre ganglionic and post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers, and the visceral efferent fibers. 
So what about the arteries of the pelvis? You have common iliac artery, the sternal iliac artery. So the common iliac artery, each common iliac artery is as the pelvic iliac in front of the sacroiliac joint by dividing into the external and internal iliac artery. This is very important because the common iliac artery it, at the level of the sacroiliac joint can give to the two important branch, external and internal iliac artery. So we'll discuss the external iliac artery. The external iliac artery runs along the medial border of the psoas muscle. So this is the medial border of the psoas muscle, following the, the pelvic brim and give off inferior bigastric and deep circumflex iliac branches. So give two important branches, inferior gastric artery and deep circumflex iliac artery. So if you ask about the uh, branches or the origin of the inferior gastric artery, you should select the external iliac artery. So the external iliac artery come, came from the iliac artery, common iliac artery, and give to branch the inferior gastric artery and deep circumflex iliac artery. Internal iliac artery passes down into the pelvis to upper margin of the greater sciatic foramen, where it divides into anterior and posterior division. So the internal pass and give two branches, anterior and posterior division. So the branches of this division supply the pelvic viscera, the perineum, and the pelvic col and the bottom. So what is the branches of the anterior division? As we said, we have two anterior and posterior division. Okay. What are the branches of the anterior division and what is the uh, branches of the posterior division? The anterior division gives to the pelvical artery, the obturator artery, the inferior physical artery, the medial rectal artery, internal pudendal artery, inferior collateral artery, uterine artery, and vaginal artery. This is the branches give. Uh, arises from the anterior division. I, I, so the posterior division is the iliolumbar artery, lateral sacral artery, and superior gluteal artery. So this is about the artery. Vein of the vessels, the external iliac vein, and the internal iliac vein, and medial sacral vein. So. What about this external iliac vein? The external iliac vein began behind the inguinal ligament as continuation of the femoral vein. It is run along the medi medial side of the corresponding arteries and join the internal iliac vein to the form common iliac vein. It is receives the inferior epigastric and deep circumflex iliac vein. So it is uh, so it is joined the internal iliac to form the common iliac vein. So the internal iliac vein and the external iliac vein to come, uh, form the common iliac vein. The internal iliac vein began uh, by the joining together of the towards tributaries and correspond to the branches of the internal iliac artery. It is passed upward in front of the sacroiliac joint and joins the external iliac vein to form the common iliac vein. What about the lymphatic of the of the vessels? The lymph nodes and the vessels are arranged in the chain along the main blood vessels, and the nodes are named after the blood vessels with which they are associated. Thus, these are the external iliac node, internal iliac node, and the common iliac. No, this is uh, all about the, the pelvic and pelvic organs. So now we'll discuss about the structure related to the anterior abdominal and the pelvis. Okay, this is the first question. Who will answer this question? Please, you can read this question and answer it. Any volunteers? Uh, 
Hello, Dr. Hanadi. Steroid fontanel and steroid A. Answer is A. X is steroid fontanel and Y is uh, steroid fontanel. Please read the question first and they answer it. Identify someone and give him the question. Is the question and answer it. Question identify X and Y in the given picture. A, uh, uh, X, mastoid fontanel. Y, zephoid mm. fontanel. B, uh, X, uh, is Freud, uh, is Freud, Y, mastoid fontanel. C, X, ox occipital fontanel, Y, mastoid fontanel. D, X, Freud, fontanel, Y, occipital fontanel. It is D. To ask about D. X and Y. Look here for X and Y. Okay. It is or... D. D is F. It is B. So it is B. Agree? Yes. So the X. answer. No, no, A. Uh, Why A? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, no. The fontanel is to the mastoid process. So what is the answer? I will say A. Yeah. Others? I agree with B. Why? Yeah. X yes. is spinoid and Y is mastoid fontanel. Yes, it has the correct answer is B. Y oxidative. Yeah. B. Yes, it's, it's, it's spinoid fontanel and mastoid fontanel. So in the given picture, the X indicates the spinoid fontanel and Y represent mastoid fontanel. Okay. Can you read the answer, the answer, please? Explanation. Can you read the explanation? Uh, correct. Yes. Correct answer B is X is Freud fontanel, Y mastoid fontanel. Uh, in the given picture, X uh, indicates Freud fontanel and Y represent mastoid fontanel. The skull is made up of two font, uh, font, uh, frontal, two parietal and two temporal bones, along with the upper portion of the occipital bone and uh, the wings of the sphenoid. The bones are not uh, united rig rigidly, but are separated by membrane space, uh, the sutures, here named sutures. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next question. Look for the picture first. Who, who will answer this question? X is the digital sutures and Y is the uh, lambdoidal suture. Uh, Z is this the coronal is sutures and T. Okay. See the question. See the see the question. Yes, you can read. Which of the following what option is, is correct? What is the option is correct? This X. X is D. Secretive to check. D. Who said D? D. D. Correct answer. D. D. Yes, D is the correct answer. Excellent. Yes. T is the correct answer. This T for frontal suture, X for sagittal suture, lambdoidal suture, and coronal suture. This is the, the correct answer. So what's the question three? Answer is C. Synovial joint. Arafa, you can read the question, please. Question three, the sacroiliac joint is the synovial joint. All the option. Uh, fibrous joint, cartilaginous joint, synovial joint, and D is fibrocartilaginous joint, ball and socket joint. What is your answer? 
My answer is C, synovial joint. Excellent, Alpha. Excellent. This is the correct answer. Believe there is explanation. Uh, the sacroiliac joint, uh, it's synovial joint, the irregular articular surface of the joint make a contribution to joint stability, but this is mainly maintained by the very strong posterior and interosseous sacroiliac ligament. The sacrospinous and sacrotuberous ligament also contribute to joint stability, supplied by branch of the sacral plexus at posterior remi of S1. Thank you, Arlo. Thank you. Okay. Question four. I will read. You are welcome. Okay, question four. Android belfis, a round uh, round shaped belfic brim with transfer diameter greater than anterior posterior diameter. B, round shaped belfis with anterior posterior diameter greater than the transverse diameter. C, over shaped belfic brim with uh, transfer diameter greater than anterior posterior diameter. D over shape belfic uh, brim with uh, anterior posterior diameter greater than the transfer diameter. Uh, e hard shape belfic brim with transfer diameter greater than the anterior posterior diameter. Uh, the answer. The answer is C. The answer is C. It's so Android. Belfic. Android. E. O A. E. The Android is E. Hard shape belfic brim with a transverse e. diameter. E, the answer. Heart yes. related to the android. So, yes. fuck it. This is said over. Well. Habit, this is the, uh, it is a gynecoid. Uh, it's a heart pelvis, yes. This is android pelvis. So, it, the answer is? E. D. E. 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 The answer is E. We said before, the android pelvis is heart shaped. Question five. It's easy. My question is not a uh, for me. So, no problem. Now it's a bit. Can I read this question? Question five. Yes, you can read, you can read it. Okay, gynecoid pelvis, round shape pelvic brim uh, with transverse diameter greater than anterior posterior diameter. B, round shape pelvic brim with anterior posterior diameter greater than transverse diameter. C, oval shape pelvic brim with transverse diameter greater than anterior posterior diameter. D, oval shape pelvic brim with anterior posterior diameter greater than transverse diameter. E, hard shape pelvic brim with transverse diameter greater than anterior posterior diameter. My answer will be C. C. Yes, and yes. yes, the transverse diameter is a greater than anterior posterior diameter. Excellent. Excellent. This is the ideal answer of the gynecoid pelvis. Is C. Yes, it's a well shaped pelvic brim. Question six. It's the recall question. What is the origin of obturator artery? Internal iliac artery, A, B, external iliac artery, C, common iliac artery, D, deep circumflex iliac artery, E, femoral artery. The answer is A, internal iliac artery. Excellent, Trilogian, excellent. Yes. It is the yes. peripheral artery is the origin from mm -hmm. the internal iliac artery. Interior. Yes. Okay, yeah, the question seven. Any volunteer? Which muscle from form the base of diaphragm? A. Levator in I and posterior. B. Levator in I and piriform. C. Obturator internus and posterior. D. Obturator internus and levator in I. E. Obturator internus and piriform. A. Levator in I and posterior. We give you a schedule. Yes, sure. Our the perfect diagram. Also, only the elevator and the cockpit. Yes. Yes. And cockpit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the correct yes. answer. Yeah. 
Can you read the explanation, please? Levator and I are cooked to years. The basic diaphragm is a muscular part partition formed by the vector and I and coxygeus and coxygei that may be included in partial in parietal fascia on their upper and lower aspects. In separate, it separates the, uh, the basal cavity above from the perineal region below. Yes. The levator and I is made up of three parts, pubococcygeus, pubercalis, <laughs> and iliococcygeus. The coccygeus situated behind the levator and I and frequently tendinous as much as muscular. Extend from ischial spine to the lateral margin of the sacrum and coccygeus. That's all. Okay, excellent. Next question, question is. I will read. Yes, welcome. Uh, to, redu uh, to reduce post operative pain after cesarean section, <laughs> an obstetrician forms iliuinguinal, iliohypogastric nerve block uh, on his uh, 25 years old patient. What is the nerve root of the iliuinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve? Um, iliuinguinal. <laughs> Type the option uh, A T12, B T12 and L1, C L1, D L2, E L1 and L2. E L1 L2. Uh, the answer is uh, L D L2. I don't know. B or C. L1 or L2. L1 L2. L1. L1. The answer is L1C. I think the best, the best answer here is L1. C. C. Correct answer. Yes. Agree with C? C. Agree with C? Yes. Yes. Agree with C. Yes. Yes. Because both of these nerves are terminal branches of the anterior ramus of the spinal nerve L1. Question 9. We have 15 questions, uh, just now about five left, okay? Hey, Following... sir? Yes, question nine. Following red, uh, radical hysterectomy and pelvic lymphadenectomy for stage one carcinoma of the cervix, a 63-year-old woman reports weakness of hip adduction, which now most likely to have been injured during operation. Yes. It is uh, as uh, option A, obturator nerve, B, femoral nerve, C, inferior gluteal nerve, D, superior gluteal nerve, E, sciatic nerve. Answer is A, obturator nerve. Excellent, Dr. Rabina. The correct answer is the traitor nerve. Okay. Uh, this is a very cool question. Dr. Pina, if I read this explanation, please. Yes, sir, yes, sir. The answer is obturator nerve. The obturator nerve and vessels are present in the floor of the obturator fossa, where it also crosses the pelvic part of the ureter. The ovarian fossa is a depression in the lateral wall of the pelvis. The anterior branch of the obturator nerve innervates the adductor longus, adductor brevis, and gracilis uh, muscles, as well as giving innervation to the hip joint. As a result, there are chances of getting injury to obturator nerve following radical hysterectomy and pelvic lymph adenectomy which may again lead to weakness of hip adduction. Thank you, Dr. Bina. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. So, question 10. Just five questions left. Yeah. Question 10. I will read. Which artery? Okay, which artery provides blood supply to the to the medial part of the anterior abdominal uh, wall below the, the, the umbilicus? Type A, superior epigastric artery, B, superior mesenteric artery, C, intercostal artery, D, inferior mesenteric artery, E, inferior epigastric artery. Uh, below umbilicus, the answer is C. E, inferior epigastric artery. Inferior epigastric artery is the blue. 
البلكوس اوكي ذيس از ذا ريكولكريشن يس كان يو بليز ريد ذا ستاريا Okay, the inferior bigasi are the, the two main vessels supplying the abdominal wall from above uh, are medially are medially located superior bigastic artery and laterally musculophrenic artery, both of which arise from the internal thoracic artery. Blood supply from below is provided by the inferior bigastic artery located medially and the deep circumflex iliac artery laterally, and both of these arteries arising from the external iliac artery. Like, yeah. Excellent, Dr. Rafa. Thank you so much. This is about lecture, question 11. Any volunteer? Yes, sir. Hello, welcome. Welcome, Dr. Rafa. Um, following a routine elective cesarean section, the rectus sheath is being sutured. With regard to the rectus sheath, which of the following is correct? A. Arcuate line de demarcates the upper limit of the posterior layer of rectus sheath. B. External oblique aponeurosis forms the posterior aspect of the sheath. C. Internal oblique aponeurosis uh, always passes in front of the rectus abdominis. D. Scarbus fascia is superficial to camber fascia and the external oblique. A transversalis fascia lies directly below the rectus sheath. Yes. The answer. Uh, answer is E transversalis yes. fascia lies directly below the yes. rectus sheath. Yes, E yes. is the answer. Transversalis fascia lies directly below the rectus sheath. This is the correct answer. Agree with Dr. Arafat? Yes, this is yes. directly below the rectus sheath. Yes. Uh, the rectus sheath is formed from. Yes, Dr. Arafa. Yes, a uh, transversal fascia lies directly below the rectus sheath. The rectus sheath is formed from the abonurosis of three muscles transversus abdominis, external and internal oblique muscle. Above the quiet line, the abonurosis of the external oblique passes in front of the rectus abdominis and the transverse abdominis passes behind. The abonurosis of the internal oblique divided into two at the lateral margin with the anterior lamellae passing in front of the rectus abdominis and the posterior lamellae passing behind. Scarbus fascia is deep to the camber fascia and superficial to the external oblique muscle. Not superficial. Forms the layer below the rectus sheath. Thank you, Dr. Rafa. Thank you. Yes. So, the, what about this question? Question 12. I will read. Yes. Question 12. What is the dermatoma supply to the umbilicus? A, T10, T B, T4, C, S1, D, S5, E, C7. The answer is A, T10. Pelicus is 10. We're going to allow it. We said before okay. the round pelicus is 10 and above the pelicus is from the T7 uh, to, to, to 9. And below okay. the pelicus is from T10 to L1. This is very important. L1. Repeated question in recall. 13, question 13. Oh, a question that appeared for me. Okay, over 14. Question 14. This is a repeated question, okay. The last question here, okay. Question 15, the last one. Question 15. What is the answer? 13. It's a 15. The fetal skull. What is not true regarding the fetal skull? 
C. The answer is C. Not true. The false. Okay. Mm -hmm. E. E. Yeah, I think is, is this question is not nine months, it's six months. So this is the D is wrong D. because the anterior ventilator is closed in yeah. the first six months. As you know, it is a close between nine to 18 months. This is about the true. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thank you. The next week, inshallah, we'll discuss the uh, another Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.